Hey, what is going on ladies and gentlemen? I'm Duffy Duck here once again, and I'm Tip here. We are back for some more of the Maxi Toys videos. And yes, welcome back to more Let's Play of Sonic Colors for the Nintendo Wii. So, last time we actually did finish off with Starlight Carnival, and we did have a much more thrilling time on that place. And today for this episode, we're about to continue on and move on into this um, next world, which is... Planet Wisp. So even then though, let's go ahead and get started right there. So, as you expected though, we actually did manage to realize is that, um, even though we haven't exactly mentioned about this in the beginning of this last play in particular, is the fact that in Tropical Resort actually, it does make a return in Sonic Generations for the likes of the Nintendo 3DS stage, from, um, during the Modern Era stage, which is just essentially the last stage in the 3DS version of Sonic Generations. And Planet Wisps does make a return in um, Sonic Generations in the 360, PS3, and PC version from the also in modern era, and also in the final level before the actual final boss. So, and right off the bat though, we start things off with Act 1 in Planet Wisps, and we start things off really, really remarkable and beautiful at the same time. Like, for instance, we start things off, we're actually going to be running for this little, um, grassy field and whatnot, which I found really appealing for the Nintendo Wii title, and also judged by the fact that the music is absolutely breathtaking to listen to. Because even then, though, don't have any complaints about this. So, anyway, so, as far as we can actually tell, the first act of, um, this particular level alone is the fact thing that, is the fact that, um, yeah, sorry for the lack of dialogue here, folks, I really do apologize. But, um, as a matter of fact, that uh, we're actually going to be coming across into uh, yet another new Wisp introduced in this game, and that was the forms of these pink spikes. If you manage to use these spikes, what this allows you to do is the fact that you can actually stick up into the walls or ceilings, so even then, you should be able to actually clarify you're able to become like a cells like a Spider-Man or something like that, or not exactly a Spider-Man, because you don't actually use the web. But anyway, though, or the web, even. So anyway, um... Uh, when you actually use the B button, once you become a pink spikes uh, formation, what that allows you to do is that you can actually perform yourself a spin dash. Okay, I wasn't expecting that. Because, um, usually speaking such, though, is that just like in Sonic Unleashed for the 360 and PS3, that, um, you can't just actually perform yourself a spin dash and whatnot, which, um, it kind of makes me wonder if that is entirely missing ever since in the 3D era, so even then, that's all that I should really think about this at this point in time, so... Anyways, let's just go ahead and run up here, so just in case we're able to actually see what is up ahead. So even then though, um, unlike in Sonic Generations and variation of Planet Wisp, that time um, you start things off with um, just a grassy field area, and then the end is simply just actually racing for this factory uh, velocity or anything like that. Um, I'm pretty sure in this, in this, this in variation of Planet Wisp is that you, you're actually be spending most of your time exploring this little factory area, so... Even though right now these little egg, Eggman's robots, they have now managed to wear the, uh, the Builder's uh, wear. So even then though, that's all I can really imagine about this. So, uh, right about though, Red Star Ring is usually over there, onto this little dash ramp of any sort. So even then, that's what it's really going for here. And if we actually just try to obtain this boost right there, in addition to these uh, buttons of Rainbow Rings we can go through for extra points. So even then though, there's not much we can tell. Oh yeah, right the bat though, we actually come across into these little, uh, uh, counterpole cannons, which are essentially makes, uh, these items do make a return ever since Sonic Unleashed for the 360 and PS3 most likely. Well, technically the Wii PS2 version also has that as well, but most of the time it's just basically on the HD version of the game, while simply just actually, you know how it was in Sonic Unleashed in the 360 and PS3 version, you have to simply just press only one button until you actually go either, uh, straight on, or even just jump higher, or even just go drop down. However, though, this time around, though, in this game particularly, is the fact that you can actually change the directions with the, um, the control stick, and then simply just press A to launch yourself up. So, all straight forward. So even then, though, I don't think there's actually a way... Ah, oh, you gotta be kidding me, right? I've missed out just only another extra life. So anyways, now we got ourselves these pink spikes in addition to this little additional unlockable stuff in the Sonic Simulator planet. We even end up that we're definitely going to be discussing for this stuff until we actually get into the extra video, so don't worry, we will get into that one day. Anyways, now for Act 2, where I believe that we're going to be, um, dealing with the 2D section, I think. Because, yeah, you're going to be seeing this pose for quite some time at this point, so... Anyway though, so, yeah, there's a red star ring right off the bat though, if you simply just launch onto the spring and that's it, so, 
pretty self-explanatory kind of thing about it, though. So, anyway, let's just go ahead and go up, and hopefully we can actually dash through here to get our yet another Red Star Ring, as a matter of fact. So even then, though, that we can instantly manage to actually deal with some of this stuff with ease, so... Yeah! Alright, so I need to know what's anything up here, most likely on the far left. Oh, okay, it's just an invisible wall. I hate the fact that you're gonna be constantly seeing the invisible walls all of a sudden, but it's not too bad, honestly, so... There's our third Red Star Ring, which I highly doubt it we might actually possibly get um, all the Red Star Rings as much as we can. In this one particular axe though, really, but even then though, we'll never know until we actually decide to actually just uh, decide on that one yet, so... Oh shoot! Ah, we lost a whole bunch of rings, even for these little um, annoying ring pods and what have you. Which, I don't know if these guys does make a return ever since like Unleashed, but even then, uh, I haven't exactly got a clue for about, about it though, so... If we try to jump over towards here, extra life. So even then, though, we can actually just uh, get ourselves a little bit of um, life grinding going. I believe we got ourselves 35 of them right now. So even then, though, that we got plenty of them as far as this is concerned. So, okay, so if I recall correctly, the last and fourth uh, red star ring is going to be located at this little um, trap floor. So even then, though, that's all that's really going for here. Okay, let's slide here, so just in case we can squeeze through those gaps. And we pretty much end of a level, I guess, so let's see what rank we can get. And it's just B rank, so... Oh well, no, no, no matter, so even then though, that we hopefully trying to actually just, uh, you know, do some more things out of the way. So, um, yeah, quite a few things I want to mention about this is that we only got six more days to go until Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy is about to come. Which I'm super excited for it still, so even then though, that's, um... Uh, Expecting to actually get even more trophies on our PlayStation 4 for the time, and also some whole bunch of stuff we can actually probably do from our own time. But even then, though, I'm most excited about that. So, um, speaking of such, though, is that, um, yeah, that's what I can imagine about this, so. Anyways, um, here we go with this little sequence right here, and I somehow missed my timing jump and whatnot. If you're trying to reach onto this top part 6 section, like, even for a long amount of time, um, I'm pretty sure it gives you a, a opportunity to actually get yourselves a red star ring, I'm assuming, or probably just a, um, the laser power-up, so even then, though, that should be able to be just as that. So there's another drift section, which unfortunately though, that um, is only for likely shorter, um, as, for, as a matter of fact though. But anyway, enough about this little Jibi Jabba. But I'm pretty sure that in so many segments of this level, it's going to be taking place at the almost nearly towards the end of the, um, the actual um, level itself in Act 1. But except the fact that we're going to be dealing with these uh, blue cubes uh, west, and also in addition to these little breakable blocks that we can instantly manage to uh, destroy them ever since- Whoa! Whoa, 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 whoa! whoa. <laughs> I was attempt to fall off and die right there. But anyway, so um, let's just see if we can actually hopefully find ourselves our yes, another blue cube west. But even then, though, we can hopefully try to actually try to actually get into it, and hopefully we can actually just to try to carefully time our platforms and whatnot until we actually jump and what have you. Because um, if we miss our timing jump on this particular section, then we're obviously not going to make it, so... But anyways, let's see what rank we can get. I'm pretty sure it's yet again B rank, so even then, though, because, um... I believe we already missed out quite a lot of um, red star rings on this particular section, basically, so I think, that's, I think that's the reason why we actually got ourselves quite a few B ranks every once in a while, so... yeah. So I don't think we actually got ourselves the unlockable thing yet, but hopefully we will do one day. Now for Rax 4, see if we know, let's see how this is going to be turns out, so... Yeah, let's see. Alright, so... Yeah, I'm really loving this music so far, especially those of all that... Oh yeah, we're gonna be doing a drift section right here? But even then, though, that I don't think there's anything else to it, besides drifting on this particular section. And I believe that uh, we're gonna be doing this particular sequence right there. Whenever my first time playing this game, Chip, I have to admit, though, is that I usually really despise this particular section. Oh yeah, if you boost up all the way up there, then you, sh you should probably get yourselves a first red star ring right off the bat. So, even then, though, that's the only method I always attempt to do. And I believe the second red star ring is gonna be evolving through up there, but in order to actually get to it, you must be able to use the laser um, power up. But even then, though, no. oh, actually, there's actually a second one just over there, actually, matter of fact, because that's, um, yeah, because it actually leads you to a certain stuff. 
Okay, this particular se sequence right there, the most tiny platforming sequences, can always throw me off. Because uh, no matter what, how many times if you're actually trying to land on these platforms desperately, however, uh, the only downside I can think of about this chip is the fact that sometimes Sonic's double jump can get really, really stiff at one point. But anyways, let's go ahead and use our laser power-up until we actually zip across this little section. Not to mention we got ourselves the orange uh, rocket wisp out of the way, but also the red star ring too. And then we can actually use the rocket all the way up to blast off to the skies, and hopefully we can actually dive in. Assuming if we actually get ourselves a pretty good spot to land on. And as a matter of fact, we can launch up, and hopefully we're not gonna um, overshoot these rails, as a matter of fact. And I believe if we actually hop onto this rail long enough, in addition to this little um, uh, slingshot cannon, this will give us a yet another red star ring. And I'm pretty sure once we get towards this particular ending sequence right there, if we slide in, uh, if we actually slide through, yay, we got ourselves all five of those red star rings. So let's see what reward we can get. Oh, nice. We got ourselves a fantastical S rank after all of that uh, red star rings we actually obtained. So yeah, how about that? So yeah. Pretty cool, actually, is considering the how the fact that this is actually the first ever level that we actually gone through all these red star rings. Yeah, I found this to be amazing. You know, as alien as this place is, there's something very Eggmanish about it. I think he's transforming it somehow, like making it part of his theme park. Attention guests, if you can hear this message, you are trespassing in an area still under renovation. If you are not a robot, please return to the main park areas and ignore anything evil you might have seen here. Thank you. It looks like the theme of his park is universal domination and the conquest of alien races. It's more than a theme, it's a reality. He's using them like some kind of living intergalactic gas. That's pretty low, even for a sleazeball like Eggman. Some displacement of indigenous aliens and destruction of natural resources may occur. Eggman Enterprise is not responsible. Are you getting any of that? Yeah, they're totally freaked out. It sounds like they're in shock because of public transportation and a loony nurse. Oh no, wait, scratch that. They're in shock because of their planet's strange transformation and having been dragged across the universe. Well, I still can't believe he kidnapped the whole planet. How does somebody do that? They're saying it was either ice cream or a tractor beam. Yeah, well, I'm going to guess it was an ice cream shooting out of those generators. If it was, I would get one for back home. Dude, I'd get two. Now, if everyone will excuse me, I'm going to put a stop to these renovations. Oh, I did not notice these uh, whole button sea of wisps do uh, actually belong in that area. I'm guessing it's more likely due to the fact that these particular wisps are essentially half their home, which is actually this place. But even then, I'll never know. But anyways, now we move on to Act 5. So even then, let's see if, how well we can actually do in this act. So hopefully, no well should be done. And hopefully not too many trial no one at one point or another, unlike in Starlight Carnival, that I believe we actually did die like twice. I'm assuming that's what this is. Is yeah, because we actually did accidentally died in the fourth act because as a result, yeah. So, anyways, uh, in this particular level, we're actually going to be using is the orange uh, rocket wave, as you can clearly see what's going on right now. Because the thing is, though, is that in some of these areas, it does contain the red star rings, as a matter of fact. But of course, uh, we will try our best if we did grab some of them. But even then, uh, that we're not going to do 100% completion on that. So. We're just going through the game itself, and also we're going to be showing you guys about these extra stuff here and there too. So, we figure we might as well just uh, do that. So, anyway, let's blast off over to this particular sequence there. Until we actually get blasted off. Oh, we managed to destroy these little um, whole buttons here of yellow blocks. Which, I don't know if it's just me, but I'm pretty sure every time you actually go for these little yellow blocks, I'm pretty sure you guys also a 3B ring or something, although I may be wrong about this. But even then, though, we'll just have to wait and see until we actually discover one of those things. I think that it doesn't, though, so it just stays blank, so yeah, it's not going to be good. So yeah, uh, before we actually uh, proceed, we need to double check on these certain areas in this level. 
In fact, there might be a uh, the, uh, the fourth red star ring. Should be around here, but in fact, it's actually over towards there. Even though, sadly, we, are, we actually lost all of our rings, sadly, though, it's probably because uh, we actually accidentally get hit by these, one of those Eggman's robots. But as long as we're actually going to be pretty much okay with this, Chip. Yeah, but still, sometimes that lock on indicator doesn't register for me properly, though. But it's not too terrible about it, it's just it's there. So anyways, there's our fifth and last red star ring, and that's all the red star rings in this um, Act 5. And let's see what ranking we can get. So since that in the previous level, we actually got ourselves a S rank just to begin with, so sadly we only got B rank because we actually lost some of these rings. So, oh well, who knows to that, so... But as long as we're actually doing pretty well, almost towards the end. In fact, we're actually in the halfway point of the game already. Yeah, truth be told by that, because, you know, some of these levels are really, really short. Well, some of these levels can get really long at one point or another, so... Now for Act 6, which in this web um, usage on this level is actually forms of the pink spikes and green hover, which we will get into that in just a moment. So, anyways, let's go ahead and just get on, get this thing started with the rail grinding section right there, which is pretty, um, pretty much a thrilling experience. Ah, why did I do that? Oh, I'm an idiot. Why did you not know that was there? I don't know about you, Duffy, but anyway. So yeah, we just have to restart right there, because for some reason, just like how it does it in Sonic Unleashed, from Nintendo Wii, PS2, and Xbox 360, and PS3 version, mind you, uh, the only thing that kind of irritates me for the most part is that every time you die at the beginning of the levels themselves, uh, what happens was though is that it carries your time over, so even then though, it doesn't usually reset, unlike how it does it in the old school Sonic games at this point. But I mean, granted, I mean... I don't know if it's just me, I'm pretty sure it does that in Sonic Generations as well. But even though, I'm not exactly sure on Sonic Forces though. But hey, as long as we're actually in the halfway point until when um, Sonic Forces is about to be released, until sometime in uh, um, this year's holiday season, so even then though, that um, it might be a perfect opportunity to actually finish every single 3D Sonic games, excluding Sonic 06 until during in September year, so even then, that can definitely can be waited for. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I think I managed to decide to actually do that game again, but this time with a much better quality and all have you. And also the, uh, the commentary as well, on the, on the other hand, I believe it or not, I might not, not, not looking forward to actually replay the game again, I have to be really honest here. Because, uh, as, as a matter of fact, that, that game is considered to be the worst 3D Sonic game's career, because of the matter of fact, there's a tons of glitches, terrible ideas for these certain gimmicks, and also there's really, really overly complicated stories. So even then, though, that's all I can really must to describe about that game. So, I believe the final part in this particular act right there, Act 6, is that we're going to be going all the way towards the actual factory itself. Which, as a matter of fact, that might be true. So even then, though, that we need to find our way to get all the way up to the top while simply just actually just defeating those enemies over to this point here. And at the same time, I think that I might as well just have to grab myself a green hover wisp, so even then, we can actually actually access these next areas. Yeah, while simply just actually going for this point, just right on this point. But even then, though, that um, we pretty much almost are ah, done it. Yeah, but it's like how it does it in... Um, uh, how do I recall? In um, Sonic Adventure uh, 1, in this case in the light speed dash um, switches, uh, sometimes the, uh, the time limit can get really worn out every time when it's like, yeah, yeah, what's that? Okay, so if you try to jump over here, there's the, uh, the fifth red star ring. We only missed out only two of them, so that's okay by me, so... But as long as the gold ring is almost right near to us, so let's see what uh, what well we did on this level, though. Maybe then I will never know. Oh, right, another S ring. Oh wow, that was pretty amazing actually. We even end up that as a matter of fact though that we're doing so well in this world actually. Unlike how it does it in um, Starlight Carnival. Although we did have a fun time filling part of the um, the actual um, Starlight Carnival, but this is the fact that the amount of S ranks we got is pretty much limited. But as far as in this world in general, we actually only got two of them so far. Anyways, now time for the boss battle. And there's the generator. It seems like these guys are getting harder and harder to find. I know for a fact these guys are getting harder and harder to beat. Please remember, 
all planets in Eggman's incredible interstellar amusement park are, as far as you know, wholly owned properties of Eggman Enterprises and its subsidiaries. All unauthorized photography, video reproduction, or shutting down of generators is strictly prohibited. Thank you. Eggman, I am going to save this planet, and I am going to free these aliens. No copyright law in the universe is going to stop me. We can save a lot of time and broken robots if you just quit now. Isn't that the same boss type enemy ever since in Tropical Resort, but a little bit more different this time around? Because yes, every once in a while any later acts in this game actually has to offer. Sometimes they get used also repeated boss battles, but the major difference was though is to actually attacking these bosses, so... And also the color power is just only a different requirement too. Take um, this particular part for example, that assuming that much like it does in laser, if you actually activate the on the pink spikes, then you actually deal the double the damage on this particular relation boss battle. So yeah, I believe this might actually be a yet another S rank right now, because as far as I'm concerned, that we pretty much guarantee we get ourselves a three in a row S ranks, as you can clearly see. So yeah, like pretty much all oh, we almost beat this boss battle for under 30 seconds. We even know that was a pretty tight uh, looking timer. So yeah, that was it for Planet West. I actually really enjoyed this well so much, but even then, that's all there is to say about this. So yeah, now let's move on into a next cutscene right there. Wow, sometimes I even impress myself. For a second there, I wasn't sure I was going to pull it off. Well, who am I kidding? We both knew how this would end. Uh, are you talking to the broken robot who can't hear you? Uh, maybe. That's between me and the robot. See, the important thing here is the alien planet is free. Absolutely. So, we can just forget about the whole talking to dead robots thing, right? Nope. I knew you'd say that. <laughs> well, come on. I've seen you save the day a lot of times, but I've never seen you talk to a pile of metal. Touché. So anyway, so let's go ahead and end things off here, so join me and Duffy next time on Let's Play Sonic Colors for the Nintendo Wii. It's the fact that we're moving on into the fifth level in the game, which is the form of Aquarium Park. So yeah, see you guys next time. Later, folks. See you guys then.